Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Makes and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to make little pumpkins that never rot. For the core of the pumpkins, I am going to be using plastic shopping bags. Most of us have loads of these around the house. I reuse them as bin liners, but they can be a great resource for crafting. So this time I just cut up some and rolled them up to make a core that made it a little bit too rectangular. So instead I'm just scrunching them up and I'm adding more and more bags until I build up a shape that is the desired size. Finally, I put them in the corner of another bag and I'm using some thick yarn and a large needle um, poking through the middle of the plastic bag bundle that I made and I'm tying the thread in a way that I'm forming the sections of the pumpkin. Now the scrunched up bags formed quite a tight bundle so I'm using a pair of pliers to help me pull the needle through. Uh, but I'm going to go all around the shape of the pumpkin and uh, form all of the separate sections. Um, as I was doing this, the shape actually got flattened a lot. Uh, but in this case, that's not bad. I think it actually really helped. When I'm done with the sectioning, I cut off the excess and I put it aside and made a second one. This time a smaller, rounder pumpkin. I think I used up um, about five plastic bags between the two pumpkins. So besides it being a really good way to recycle, it's not using up that many anyway. Of course you could make lots and lots of pumpkins, but Instead of using foam or um, some sort of stuffing, I think it's a really good alternative. So when I have all of the strings tied off nicely, I'm using a little bit of hot glue to secure them. And this also melts the plastic bags a little bit, makes them um, not slide on top of each other that much anymore. It was a little bit too soft still so I'm just adding a layer of masking tape over the cores to firm it up a little. Although I did lose um, the very evident sectioning so I just redrew them with a marker and used some hot glue to redefine the sections. Now that I have the cores and I'm happy with them, I am using some air dry clay to build up the final layer and to get them sculpted into the desired shape. I'm just using a spray bottle with water to help me adhere the clay to the core and also it helps with um, smoothing the surface. There was a lot of smoothing and correcting the shape and adding and taking away in parts. I wanted to make them look sort of realistic. I was uh, referencing images of real pumpkins on my computer. I'm using this pokey tool to draw some lines um, to make it look more organic and realistic. And of course, I do the exact same thing to the larger pumpkin. This one had a much better defined shape. Maybe the plastic bags were more dense. I didn't need to add a layer of um, masking tape. I just went straight on uh, with the air dry clay. And I just add the clay on section by section again and then see to the seams and smooth it out and um, bring out the definition of the pumpkin texture. 
When I was done with sculpting, I left them dry for two whole days and now I'm painting them with acrylic paints. Of course, I'm starting a nice bright orange as the base and I'm painting them both in the same color scheme, so a bright orange as the base coat. When that dried, I brought out a golden yellow and I'm brushing all over the surface of both of the pumpkins. Um, it's sort of like an overbrush. I'm not going into the nooks and crannies, but I am sort of coloring most of the surface. And I actually put on a couple of uh, coats of the same yellow. When that has fully dried, I am using my finger and a very bright yellow to rub over the entire surface of the pumpkin. This time, sort of like dry brushing with my finger. I like using my finger because unlike a brush, it can't reach accidentally into the deep grooves that I don't want. As a final color addition, I'm using a little bit of light green and I'm just rubbing it on on patchy sections, mostly right at the bottom and at the top around the stem. And I'm also adding some splashes of the same uh, light green. This is something I noticed some decorative pumpkins tend to have these little green splotches. When that has dried, I am making a wash with some yellow, orange and a very small amount of brown and some shellac ink. And I'm going to be coating the entirety of the pumpkins. This is going to seal in all of the layers of acrylic paint and also it works as a wash, as you can see, it goes deep into those grooves, um, bringing out even more dimension and making all my hard work worth it. To make the stems of the pumpkins, I am using a little bit of aluminium foil and I'm shaping them with my fingers, as you can see, actually trying them on the very pumpkin to make sure that it fits. And I'm just forming a sort of disc for the base and the little stem piece. Again, I was referencing real pumpkins off screen. Um, the stems tend to have this variegated texture. So to recreate that, I'm using a little bit of faux leather cord that I had um, left over. And I'm using some hot glue to attach it, sort of like sectioning up the stem piece as well, except this time the ridges are standing out and I'm just attaching it to the base and running it along the length of the little stem and cutting, off, cutting it off at the top. And I'm just adding um, five or six little sections on each. Basically, I just um, put as many as much cord as I had left. I used it all up. And I'm also adding a bit of extra hot glue um, between those sections, um, sort of pushing the hot nozzle right in there uh, so that I don't have like a smooth surface but a very gnarly, ridgy texture. Uh, after all the glue has set, I am base coating both of them in a nice chocolate brown. And when that's dried, I am using a dark green to overbrush both of them. And finally, adding some of that same 
light green that I used on the pumpkins themselves, this time using my finger to apply it. And this step really brought out the texture I created with that cord and the hot glue. I'm actually really happy with them at this stage. Uh, but in the end I decided to add um, the same wash um, to make the colors a little bit warmer. And I had some of that wash left over so I thought I might as well use it up. And I think it improved the look even more. So the final step is to attach the stems to the pumpkin with a dab of hot glue. Because I made them shaped out of tin foil, I shaped perfectly to the pumpkins themselves, they fit on perfectly. As a final step to make them look a little bit magical, I am using a small amount of gold acrylic paint to make them a little bit shiny. And even if they don't look like magic pumpkins, I think it just makes them aesthetically pleasing. And here we are. This is how I made tiny pumpkins that will never rot. I think they make for a perfect Halloween decoration and it's also a really good recycling project using up all of those plastic bags instead of buying decorative pumpkins from the store. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do let me know what you think about my pumpkins in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you like these sort of crafty projects, please consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more interesting and diverse crafty projects and I will be publishing new videos every week. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye.